Welcome back to the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast for the first ever reaction to the Tour de France Femme reveal, which I attended last week in Paris on Thursday, the 14th of October. I've got the, the profile behind me. If you're watching on YouTube, obviously, or we'll, we'll show it in uh, the overlays better throughout the video. I've got my little press kit, which is nice to get something in hard copy. It's actually sponsored by with the race. It's uh, unlike sort of Paris-Roubaix or whatever, which might have, you know, well, Tour de France have like big sponsors, but they aren't on the actual name. The actual name of the race, if you registered on the UCI website, is Tour de France um, avec Swift. So I think that's where, that's what made this possible, I think. Have, they had to get a corporate p- partnership in place like that before this came about. And we have eight stages, just like Paris-Nice and Dauphiné length, starting in Paris. But Benji, your initial reaction to the whole pomp and ceremony, did you like how they made it basically one big presentation with the men's race? I think so as well because it's better when you try and combine it with the men's audience because you want to try and get as many people that watch men's cycling into watching this uh, Tour de France farm as well. And I think that's a good way of doing it. They also started with the uh, women's sparkle and took a lot of time to look into it and discuss stages and so forth, present the stages. We had the new director talk about it, Marion Rousse, and I feel like it was done pretty good. What's your feeling on it? Yeah, I think it could have really gone better, the, the presentation. I really enjoyed going there. There was a lot of hype in the crowd, people cheering for Cordon Rigaud, French you know, national, I think the biggest French rider that was there uh, for this reveal. And yeah, Marion Rousse, He's just a perfect person to have been appointed as the director, directress of this race. She's been the director of Tour de la Provence for at least two years, maybe three, which I actually think is quite a good race. Early in February, it's had good riders attending it as well and good parkour. Uh, she will, I think, be, yeah, she assumes the Christian Prudhomme role who was kind of there with her on stage talking about this route as almost like handing over the handing over the gauntlet to her. Uh, so she'll be like going out to towns, I think, and talking to mayors, getting all, doing all that sort of stuff behind the scenes too. Otherwise, some headline news, I've got it in here, which might not be, have been reported too much uh, broadly just on how the race will function, is uh, 20, 22 teams with six riders each, four flat stages, two hilly stages, two mountain stages. It's largely in the Grand Est region uh, TV broadcast will be, so I heard directly that it's two and a half hours each day, two hours of which will be race coverage and half an hour for like podium or 15 minutes preview. Yeah. Pretty solid, I'd say. I mean, got to remember, Lombardia had its first ever start to finish coverage this year in 2021 with uh, a long history. And I think, uh, yeah. So I think two hours, which is, should be about 70 Ks, is pretty pretty solid and also quite comparable to Dauphiné and Paranese. And obviously that's just the start. It's the first edition. And as well as the prize money. I mean, not really reported too much. And ASO weren't bragging about it. It wasn't mentioned in the presentation. It's 250,000. I was surprised, Benji. 250 grand yeah. for a one-week race. 100k more than Paris and Dauphiné, you know, per stage. It's not the tour equivalency, but again, first year of this race. I think 250 grand to the winner. If the winner's not AVV, Benji, that's probably going to be more than their actual salary for the year. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of true. It's it's good because uh, like 250k is I think one fourth of the men's uh, total price, but I think it's nah, a it's million. Bigger. It's, bigger? it's bigger. Okay. But in general, it's just a very big number because it eclipses the likes of uh, Baronese and Dauphiné, if I uh, recall correctly. So that means that they certainly invested a lot in both making sure that the coverage is happening and the prize money so that people can't, well, demolish the idea of the Tour de France film coming the first year by that factor of the prize money. They might have learned this from the Paris-Roubaix one. You might, You don't know if that's a recent thing that they changed or where it was planned for like, months already to be at that uh that amount but in general i feel like uh it's a good move like i can't say much more about it. you think that zwift is uh the reason for that yeah i think it no obviously like aso prepared to invest a certain amount uh, uh, apparently the race won't be profitable for or sort of breaking even for a few years but yeah zwift certainly 
obviously making a big difference for that prize pool, I would say. And especially I, I was thinking, you know, Zwift, particularly in the countries they operate in, I was like, if that prize money is not a hefty chunk of change, that's going to be an issue they'll have to get in front of and that's almost a problem for Zwift. So I guess they've, they've managed yeah. that in most people's eyes, I think. But otherwise, just before we get into the root analysis, the eight stages, I mentioned our show partner, LaCole, who produced performance cycling apparel. We're going into winter here in the Northern Hemisphere, but if you're going into summer in Australia, there's kit on LaCole as well. They've got the change of season lines out at the moment. And, uh, yeah, we can highly recommend, particularly for the Andorra and cold mornings at the moment, which are they just, they're just so cold, it, it's breaking me. But thanks to LaCole for supporting the podcast. You can check them out at www.lacole.cc. But as I mentioned, eight stages. The first one is a begins at the Eiffel Tower on the last stage of the men's race, so on the Champs-Élysées, stage 21. begins at the Eiffel Tower, and then they do 10 laps of a Champs-Élysées Arc de Triomphe uh, circuit around the Jardin de Tuileries. And, yeah, it's, I mean, I've got to say it's going to be beautiful. It's, uh, yeah, I enjoyed Paris. There was also some negatives last week, but uh, this area walking around, it's, it's beautiful, particularly in late in the evening. So it's, it's a sprinter stage finishing on the Champs-Élysées and uh, I just can't see. It. The big one is who's going to take yellow for the first time, Benji? Is it is it Lorena Vivas? She's got to be the favorite. She's my favorite. Yeah, she's definitely one of the favorites. You look at this, the pure sprinters for this, in my eyes personally, unless there's a rider that rides away early and you don't see uh, them. Well, I don't think they'll let a break go on this one. So uh, I do see a sprint happening. Vivas is one of the uh, favorite people for that, but there might be a lot of change at the top of sprinting between now and then. So I guess we'll figure it out in the weeks before if she is still one of the favorites for this race. I was looking at this race as hoping that it's more of a backloaded race so that it starts off with like, let's say, easier stage GC-wise to make sure that it doesn't get kind of ruined by it being decided in the first few days. And as you will see throughout these stages, it will progress into something that is exactly what I was hoping for personally. But I guess uh, for this first one, it's important for me that it has such a historical value and perhaps the Eiffel Tower and Champs-Élysées finish because the men's race Tour de France has that iconic finish. This can have that iconic start. And I don't know, I might actually prefer it like this because having an iconic start means that you can have a, a greater climax at the end instead of the day before the end. And that's something I do love, truly. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see how it plays out. Obviously, there'll be a huge motivation to take that first yellow jersey there and, yeah, and possibly the biggest stage of this race in terms of audience visibility. The next stage, I'm not sure, by the way, if there's bonus seconds. I assume there will be. Uh, it wasn't in the short guidebook. But anyway, stage two, 133 Ks, only 800 metres elevation, Pretty flat. There's a 1,500-meter 5% climb in the first 15Ks, and then it's 600 meters at 4.5%. So they do a lap of the finish line in Provence as they head east of Paris, and they do that first finish line lap, 20K loop, and then come back and do the finish line again to the finish. So 600 meters, 4.5%. Vos Kopecky obviously uh, locks to be competitive here. My question, Benji, is twofold. Is it too hard for Lorena Vibas? Is it too easy for Kashani Odoma? I think it's too easy for Kashani Odoma. When it comes to Vibas, uh, on paper, I would expect this to be too hard compared to the riders that are more of those punchy sprinters. Rivera could do well on a finish like this Ooh, as yes. well. Um, if oh, which it's... one? <laughs> They're on the <laughs> same team now. Boss and Rivera. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Actually, I didn't think about that going into this. So oh, sorry, uh, I guess uh, we'll figure that out by then. Corin Lebecki, I think now. Yeah, but we'll we'll need some time to yeah. convert into that along the way. <laughs> but what I also uh, adore about this parkour is I don't actually know how many K1 points you will get on this stage, but we already had a K1 point on the previous one, on the first one, on the Champs-Élysées, just in oh, front yeah. of the uh, Arc de Triomphe. So it's also pretty cool that, even though it's not really a climb, that you've got a polka dot in the second stage already. But like you mentioned, this is an uphill sprint finish. It's not going to be a, a, a Mur de Huy style of difficulty but just uh, a sprint that is slightly more uphill and therefore it's less leaning towards the pure sprinters. 
I would dare to say that Balsamo would fit as well, knowing how she yeah, did at the yeah. uh, World Championships. That'd be so, so good with my thumbnail. She might be a name for this one. As <laughs> you think about your thumbnails. <laughs> world champs. Ooh. Yeah, certainly. Uh, would be awesome to see the world champion uh, win on a parkour like this. And this race is before the new world championships next year. So it won't have a different one yet. It will be Balsamo that's starting this race with the world championships jersey. But in general, we had a flat sprint stage. We had a slightly uphill finish on the second stage in Boivin. But if we no take one a should look... have lost time, right? By on now. paper, no. But you no. never know if there's a puncture yeah. or anything. On stage three, it's a bit more uh, It's a bit more difficult, isn't it? It's not a, a straight-up flat sprint. In my eyes, I think everybody will agree with that, from Reims to Epernay. And if you remember Epernay, is that not the place where, in the men's Tour de France, Alaphilippe took yellow in 2019? 20? Something like that? I don't know. I never remember the places, which is like why I never understand why other towns bid so much for the, the rights, because I never remember their <laughs> names. Um, <laughs> yeah, 132 Ks. Here we have 1,400 meters of elevation and but steep climbs. So we have uh, 700 meter, eight percent punch, followed by two kilometers at seven percent. Close, they do another. This is another one where they do a lap of the finish line, which I like, circuit style. So you can see the women twice here uh, in Epernay. So the finish line is 400 meters, seven point six percent. On that, uh, what is it? A 24 k loop. They do the Côte de Murtigny, which is says 1k at 12.3 percent and then there's 1k at 5 percent and then they have the punch up to the line which is 400 meters at 7.6 percent i mean this is a with avdb retiring i like kasha noviadoma for this stage i just don't know whether she goes on the last climb with 4k's to go or whether the last punch is too easy for her obviously her team canyon shram is you know will voss drop benji on that 900 meter 12 percent climb i think that's where think that's they're going to the put her on pressure yeah i think that there's indeed where the pressure will happen and looking at this parkour i think it's the type of parkour where it could be either way it could be an attacker getting away or used group of like four riders that gets away on that final hill i think going on the second last hill will still be too far from the finish line that's uh, roughly 20 kilometers so it's not that easy to keep up 20 kilometers you don't know how the chase behind is going to be, how many people are going to be left after that first hill. But I would expect that there's still quite a few notable people that will be in a group behind the attackers on the first hill. And therefore, an attack there wouldn't necessarily uh, be as effective of going all out on the last hill. And then you indeed have to uh, question, is one kilometer at four and a half, four point nine percent too difficult for uh, Voss? I don't think so. No, no. <laughs> she can get over LBL climbs in somewhat of a nature. So um, I would dare to say that she has a, a perfect option of getting over these climbs, even with the people that are attacking, perhaps. And I don't necessarily see Van Vleuten or Kasia Niwadoma drop them here on that final hill, personally. These stages are getting progressively harder. This is another one where you're like, oh, there might be GC gap. You're going to have to be on on this day if people are launching it on that 1K 12% climb with 16Ks to go. And I think we might see attacks. And if you're... Van Vleuten will be the favourite for the GC going into this race, given the climbing to go and AVDB retiring. Although I don't know, Cata Blanca Vance might be the, the, the one, but this is a stage where maybe you can put AVV under pressure because you can. she's not as godlike on that 900 metre 12% climb and you can try and take some time back there uh, on stage three. So I'm looking forward to that one a lot. Stage four, this is a big one from... Troy to Barça Orb in the Grand Est, 126.5 k's, 1400 meters of climbing. From the 70 k's to go for the next 40 k's, we have four Chemin Blanc, white gravel, white road in French uh, sections, which are all actually quite you know, French Montalcino. French Montalcino. They're about oh, two k's, four k's, four k, four and a half k's, and three k's. One of them is a climb. Then. One of them is Rolly with like a 1K, apparently 8% climb preceding it. Elisa Longo Borghini has got to be on attack mode on this stage. Benji, this looks like the perfect place to mount an attack and she was strong at Strade. Yeah, I certainly agree that she's one of the riders that you would name here. I do think that the first section might not be taken as extreme as the last one, for example, because then it's still 
a solid 60, 70 kilometers from the finish line. And that's quite a bit. So I'm curious where they would start on this park or where they would start hammering it. That 1k8% like you mentioned, that's a moment where stuff can already split apart quite well if someone decides to hammer it. But I would also name Mariana Voss for this one as well. We know how good she is when it comes to gobbles. That'll certainly uh, also the case on gravel and uh, with her CX and so forth. I do believe in her. Kopecky, I would also rate quite high for this. Um, yeah, Katavash, if she, uh, if she uh, grows up into a role already that is allowed to go to the, Tr- to the Tour de France fund, because we don't know how her progression is going to be in the team of SD Works, whether she's going to be allowed to go to this level of races already on her first year. But um, yeah, that is the type of rider that I would see uh, doing pretty well on a parkour like this. And it's one of the stages I'm looking forward to a lot in this parkour. I, uh, I can't it's... fucking wait. Honestly, <laughs> you don't see these in the men race, men's races. This kind of parkour, like no, they, so, um, they're trialing this for the men's, aren't they? It's like you know how the Dauphiné they use the Megev, mm-hmm. or they they trial in the Dauphiné, yeah. which I love that we're going to see. Now, I love I love the um, symbolism of the Eiffel Tower start and the Champs Elysees Arc de Triomphe at the start, and, and but it's also a bit different as Benji said. It's it's at the start of the race, but I also I do like stuff being different from yeah. the men's race so it's not a mirror image that's what and we didn't say this at the top that's what i love about this parkour is that we're not because we have to do this pod again for the men's race and then if it was just the same parkour it'd kind of be boring i love that it is a different parkour um and so yeah, yeah i can't wait to see this stage hopefully there's and also from what i've seen in the preview video I, I, they showed in the presentation that the roads t- knock on wood they didn't look like outrageous steep and and nasty which to the point where everyone's just getting a puncture like so hopefully it's it's all right but yeah i um i love to see it so gc gaps i'm expecting on that stage hopefully ludwig as well i think this first four stages really suit ludwig benji or first five actually stage five 176 k's this might be one of the longest ones yeah 1400 meters of climbing it's short climbs though like two k's four percent four k's three percent 2k's 5%. The finish looks to me pretty just like undulating, nothing too severe. Boss, Kopecky sort of riders as well. Or Benji, is does AVV shoot her shot here before, before the climbs to come? I'm going to start off by saying something that will surprise you a lot. I have just scrolled through the entirety of Mariana Voss's history as a cyclist. She's never ridden a race of 176 kilometers in her life. Really? Yeah, this is the longest women's race I know. It is long. I think there's a 160k cap, and you have to apply for dispensation to have a women's to the UCI to have a women's stage race over six stages. Will have a stage over 160. I think you need permission at least for one of them, and uh, or you can't have too many. I think the men's also has a cap, but you're allowed like one that's super long. And we see in the men's parkour it's quite short as well. But on that point you just made, Benji, would a 240 kilometer 200k high mountain stage help this race as a spectacle because i have seen some people saying why why don't the women get a 200k stage i don't believe that needs to be done on the first year certainly we are looking for limits we're trying to challenge limits here in my eyes we see that we are starting with first of all the tour de france farm introducing the largest well the longest stage that i am aware of when it comes to women's cycling that's a limit that is being uh, hammered upon I am firmly on the side of people can definitely ride. Women can definitely ride more than the 130 kilometers that are in the majority of the races that they are riding currently. But this is the first step in that. It's a bit deadly to say, oh, they're currently doing 130k. Let's start off with 220 this year. (laughs) That's like a bit of the extreme on the opposite side in mind. I feel like a gradual upping and looking for the limits and expanding the limits is what I'm uh, I'm a big fan of. And uh, I really enjoy that. They get to uh, prove this because we know that they're able to do this. And it's just a matter that it hasn't happened yet. And yeah. I think without being too rude, if you're calling for 200k high mountain stages in these races, you're kind of outing yourself as not really following Women's World Tour closely. Yeah. Literally no one thinks the women can't do the 200ks. No one thinks that. Well, I hope at least they don't think that. It's they do a few people. <laughs> they do it in training, probably all the time. 
that's not the question. And list, I don't want long men's races for no reason. MSR is boring for 260 of the 400, 300Ks. The question you're asking is what parkour can we design to have the most exciting racing product? And currently, yeah. with and Jose Bean, Jose Bean was saying this on Twitter quite articulately last week, you know, you want these stages to be the right length. We're testing the limits here with 176Ks. You have to remember these teams, not everyone is AVV, unfortunately, not a, a, an alarming percentage of the women's pro tour, women's peloton still have to have other jobs to support themselves that are studying, etc. Like you have to acknowledge the depth of the field and also you don't want to have on the fifth stage people OTL, like a significant portion of OTL. If AVV goes on a raid, you know, and these are shorter, you just don't want that. So I think this is the right balance without, you know, it's an endurance test. I'm keen to see how Voss goes and co, but yeah, interesting stage again. Will this be more difficult for a potential sprinter to control with her team? Because six riders. Yeah. It's uh, uh it's gonna be a long day. Yeah. <laughs> I mean if Lorena Vibers, yeah, I mean we've got her, Valsamo. I think Balsamo's on Trek Benji, so she'll have Longo Borghini. Yeah. yeah, so maybe. Yeah, but could... Longo Borghini shouldn't be working for Balsamo in my eyes. Not yeah, for she, a sprint stage. She's going for GC, but yeah, I don't know. The next stage, stage six. This is from Sandy de Vosges to Rosheim. Again, we have a, a lap around the finishing circuit, which we'd love to see. 1600 meters of climbing it is steady grades at the start there's i think an extended climbing section up to the coat the grindelbruch which is we're in like the alsace region here so a lot of german sounding names uh, and that has a 1400 meter seven percent section and then lots of other short climbs the last climb is three k's at four percent but then there's like a false ridge and then a descent to the finish again i think this will be one for the for the punchers i think it's kind of like liege and yeah, I'm really keen to see Longoborghini, Kashina Viroma, Ludwig, Voss, Demi Vollering. I haven't mentioned her yet. Demi Vollering on this stage. I can't believe I mentioned her. She's probably the favorite for this stage, actually, Vollering. Yeah. If she can put uh, Voss under a lot of pressure on some of these clients. But yeah, I think this is a, a really good one. I think AVV, if she's being smart, will be keeping her powder dry here. But I reckon Benji, six to eight woman reduced bunch sprint. That is uh, very possible, and I do see that as a possibility, although that we might see an attack on that last hill and then the chasing group not really working together in the same way that we've seen quite a few times, although it's a descent to the line, so it will be much more difficult to try and get away in the descent. So you'd have to do it beforehand already and then have chaos in the chasing group for that to occur. But one thing that I do want to note before we dive into the... uh, bigger mountains in this race is when it comes to like the polka dot competition if you're like a a second row gc rider and your ability is purely climbing if i was that i'd be like wow gc okay yeah i think that von vleuten is probably very op and it's very hard to beat her so i'm going to take the easy route and i'm going to try and go for the kom jersey instead because that is going to be the first ever kom jersey of this entire Tour de France, Tour de France firm history. Do you think that's an outrageous plan or a, kind of a, a weak plan? Uh, for someone like Ludwig, I like her punch. I don't see it on the longer climbs compared to ABV yeah. and co. Now she'll probably be, I think someone like Cordon Rago Benji is the one who's like can get in a break. She's got a bit of an engine TT. I think Cordon Rago, French rider, is a great option to go for it or lip it because I don't see lip it on the long climbs either for DSM. Um, probably have to eat my words, but I think lip it also very <laughs> punchy. She'd probably be going for the stage wins to be honest. And that's probably more appropriate, but yeah, I see what you're saying. It's, it's huge exposure too to be getting that polka dot Jersey and the green Jersey as well. I mean, I don't really know how it will play out, how long riders can keep yellow for. I feel like if Vollering gets yellow early, She'll you'll have to, she'll have it for four or five days, and just on those jerseys, I forgot to mention at the top, most of the sponsors of the men's TDF are sponsoring the jerseys as well. So LCL the yellow, Skoda the green, uh, Leclerc for the the polka dots jersey. The difference is, uh, I think Chris sponsored the uh, French op- 
optometrist sponsored the white jersey in the men's. It's Liv, who also sponsored the Liv uh, racing team, uh, are doing the young riders jersey. So it'd be funny if other teams have to wear sort of another team sponsor. Zwift are actually <laughs> sponsoring the stage victory medals and the stage victor. Uh, Continental, I think, do the, the men's and the teams and competitivity prize are blank at the moment. So maybe Benji, if we get enough budget, we can sponsor the most comp- most competitive rider. That'd actually be pretty fun. I don't think it would be the, funny. I don't think we have that budget. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. We don't know yet. <laughs> All right. Stage seven. This is a historic stage because of how no. hard it is. 127 Ks, very short, but still with 3,000 meters of climbing. The first 40 Ks is flat. Then we have the Col du Petit Ballon, 9 Ks, 8.5%. Col du Plaza Vasel, 7 Ks, 8.3%. Descent, then false flat downhill, pretty big valley actually, and then the Grand Ballon, 15K, 6.2% climb, and then a 7K false flat descent sort of ridge line to Le Marchstein. This is AVV. Like I just don't see – If hopefully she recovers from her injury okay, but, yeah, this is – if she has a form of this year, she'll be the heavy, heavy, heavy favourite for this stage. And I think the others that could fight her would be uh, – Demi Vollering, Benji, who I think her pure climbing is underrated. And then the only other threats are like Katrina Allerud or someone from a break like we saw in Norway or something like that. But, yeah, do you, with AVDB gone, Benji, what about Marlon Reusser? Too steep, I think, the 9% climb at the start. Yeah, I think so as well. And, like, if we start counting for the stage for a second, we have a stage that is relatively long. Two hours and a half of coverage. What are we going to be getting? Because I want to see the stage from the bottom of the Col de Petit Bello at the start. Yeah, that's the problem. I How long think... is two hours and a half? I don't think we're going to get it. It's only two hours. Yeah, two hours. So, yeah. 50, so 50, 75 Ks. I think we'll see them at the start of the uh, second climb. And I think I think the peloton will, sh- will, be, in, in, uh, will be shredded. Or AVV might go early on Petit Ballon because, yeah, like she comes to Andorra, does training camps, does like all the big climbs back to back to back, solo. Why not just do it in the race? We've seen her do it before. So, yeah. yeah, we announced this uh, on the 19th of October. This is when we record this podcast, which means that they've got a good eight months to get us broadcast for that first climb. So uh, get on <laughs> with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm... Hopefully not. Hopefully someone comes out that we're missing, but um, it's a shame. Maybe, oh, not a shame. It's her personal decision. But yeah, I would have loved to see AVDB against AVV head to head at this Tour de France because uh, AVDB was was better than Van Vleuten on on the longer climbs earlier this year, and she was in good shape. Last stage, stage eight, finishing on La Planche de Belfi, the Super Planche de Belfi, 125 k's. We only we have less climbing than the day before, 2,500 meters of climbing, and I think there's like a a two and a half k seven percent eight percent climb, then the Ballon d'Alsace nine k seven percent descent, long valley, and then the Super Planche seven k is eight point six percent. The last k is gravel, quite steep. It's the same Planche de just with an extra k tacked on. Again, AVV time I think is usually what what we'll expect on this climb and uh, winning probably in yellow, and that'll be very very good for the Movistar sponsors. Uh, I think Benji. Yeah, I think when it comes to these last two stages in general, I do expect that the race will open early. I think on this one as well, even though that Super Planche de Belfi is a big one, like a huge difficult climb, it's got that super part to it, which you know, means that you've got that last portion of it, which is the very steep part of this climb, also added onto it, next to the normal Planche de Belfi climb. So it's definitely a very difficult finish, but there's going to be people that are desperate and are going to be trying to attack on that ball on the sus in the middle of the stage already because it's the final stage of the Tour de France from the first edition. You are going to have people that are going to risk everything they have to try and win it instead of finish sixth. And that's what is beautiful about this first edition. And also the fact that women's cycling is a bit more aggressive in that aspect in my eyes. And the fact that they've got a nine kilometer, 7% climb is definitely enough to split up the entire peloton already on that middle uh climb in this stage i'm very curious how these last two stages are going to be uh played but i think the second last one is going to be the hardest one all day while this one will be hard but i do still think that the super plunge de belfi will be the hardest part of this parkour um i'm very much looking forward to these stages but 
I hope that it doesn't get decided completely on the second last stage. So yeah, that the last stage still does something. Because that second last stage could have gaps up to multiple minutes, if not three to five minutes in my eyes at certain points. So uh, yeah, this is extremely brutal. And this is exactly what I said at the start that I was hoping for. A parkour that started off relatively relaxed, not going to be relaxed for the riders on the bike, but as the GC standings go, it's not going to be huge gaps from the start on paper. And it is building up slowly but surely towards the spectacle of the last uh, two days, which is the huge mountain stages. We don't have a time trial in this park, or is it something no, you miss? Not really. Me neither. <laughs> to be honest, like. Perhaps a 10K TT, I don't know. That could have been something, but I don't really care. Yeah, I think maybe a, no, maybe a prologue. Thing is, a prologue won't be as exciting as the shot. Yeah. The yeah, a prologue for Royce uh, and Co would have been cool, and then you have the sprint for Vibers. I think to be honest, there's like one pure bunch sprint as well, so it's a very mixed profile or parkour. I am, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how it goes. I'd be interested to see, and this is, I think, an interview topic if we can get a uh, women's world tour rider on for the off season is. Now that you have maybe now the biggest race in the women's calendar, two stages on it with extended 20-minute-plus climbs, multiple ones of those in back-to-back days, and with the yellow jersey or a podium on offer, GC podium, you know, because it's not just about AVV, but it's like who's going to fill second and third, like Bollering in there as well, Lisa Long Borghini. But to do that, you're going to need to have be on your game on these longer climbs, which we almost never see except for that Norway stage, which I, I like, but that was just one. I want to ask, will the training of those top, top riders change in any way? Will they be looking at this parkour and be like, okay, you know, La Corse, Liège, Giro Rosa, mo- you know, these are mostly like 3K, 7% or Alfredo Binder, not as long climbs. So they, they train, maybe have they been training differently? Will they change their training? For the for this parkour, that's what I'd be keen to hear. See, will we see more altitude camps? Because I know Van Vleuten did altitude camp in Andorra. If you want to go GC on these longer climbs, altitude seems to be uh, almost a precondition in the men's racing, and it certainly seems to help AVV. So, will there be altitude camps as a non-negotiable for a lot of these riders too, uh, as well? That's what I'm keen to, to hear. But yeah, any last thoughts on the parkour, Benji, the spectacle, uh, and yeah, any anything else? Like, I, I think that it's a great addition to the women's calendar in general because we know that it's uh, it's expanding. We see every single two, three weeks, we see a race pop up. To the Roman, he's going to have a women's race next year. To the Swiss, had one this year. We see that Battle of the North is something that's coming up. A 10-day stage race next year as well, combining the forces of uh, Norway, Sweden, and Denmark. I think the majority are not in Norway, though, because I recall... It not really having that many stages in Norway. I could be wrong. I could have like totally misread that paragraph. But we know that that then the stage race is coming. We know that we had the Tour de Norway, uh, Ladies Tour of Norway this year, which already had a, a proper climb in it. I think the expansion of the calendar will lead to these preparations being decided because right now it's difficult to say how they're going to uh, decide which race is going to be ridden because we don't know what the parkour of the Battle of the North completely is going to look like. We don't know whether it's going to have multiple mountain stage. I would expect it to have at least one solid one. And the additions of these longer races that have those harder climbs will indeed affect the program of those riders, but also just the general feeling of how the season is being played out because we might have more specialization in riders, riders that are going to decide, ah, yes, the big mountains might not fit me completely. I'm going to focus on the Ardennes more. And that's something that we currently don't have because they ride throughout the entire season, basically. Every single discipline, most riders. So uh, that's something I'm keen to see whether that's an evolution that will pop up. And uh, I, uh, I'm very much looking forward to this race. The parkour is something that I love. And I am way more hyped about this women's Tour de France parkour. And I was way more hyped to know this women's Tour de France par- parkour before the presentation already compared to the men's one because we know that the men's one is likely going to be very similar to previous years we know that the climbs are going to be similar to previous years we know that the climbs that are used are ones that have been used before with this women's race we didn't know that and i'm really happy with the parkour that was given i know that aso wants to put the plunge well feet into everything that they make well i heard about that apparently I'm there's like enjoying it 
there's like <laughs> per, there's like a really good like logistically it's a great place to have an uphill finish apparently there's like a loads of space for yeah. like all the, the trucks and everything so that i guess helps because like logistics is a big a big concern for these mountain top finishes what about the giro rosa what next for that isn't that normally during the tour it's still going to be an entertaining race, but I think a lot of riders are going to see this as the main, uh, op- not not the main obstacle, but the main thing. And we know it's going to be close to this race because usually the Giro Rosa is indeed very close to the uh, Tour de France normally. Um, I don't know the dates exactly. I don't know whether they're going to be overlapping or not. That might be an issue. I can't. And, really um, that would be suicide for the Giro Yeah, that would be a suicide for the Giro Rosa. They're moving back to Women's World Tour again. Yep. Um, but they are very close, and I don't think you can write the uh, Giro Rosa as per- preparation for the uh, Tour de France Femme because that amount of stages just before the Tour de France Femme might be too much as preparation. But True. I'm not sure. One to watch, one to monitor. Uh, but yeah, anyway, we're very excited. Let us know down below what you like most about the. Uh, I've just received word from I, from the producer, Miss Rouge, that the Giro Rosa is from the first of July to ten July. So that's gives a 14-day gap to the start of this race. I think that's a decent gap, and I think riders might still use the Giro Rosa now as a, a testing ground, I think, at least, particularly if you're a sprinter. Like, I'm not sure this women's uh, TDF parkour yeah. offers you a huge amount. It depends on what your goal is. You could also do a, a Vanderpool and decide to uh, stay until the mountain stage and then dip it. But then yeah. again, you'll probably be high up in GC if you wait <laughs> until the mountain stage, so it might not be worth jumping out again. But um, yeah, I am uh, very much looking forward to uh, the entire women's calendar next year. Let us know down below if you're watching on on YouTube or comment at us on or tweet at us on Twitter at Lanch and CP. Who do you have to take the first yellow jersey? Who do you think will wear the yellow jersey for the longest? And who do you think will be the what do you think will be the ultimate podium of this race? I think pretty un- uncontroversially, I think AVV is the favorite. We'd be keen to hear your thoughts on that but until our men's recap dropping in the next few days thanks for listening